Australia's national capital, Canberra, is rapidly becoming one of the world's most modern cities. Canberra was planned by the American landscape architect Walter Burley Griffin of Chicago, who was the winner of a worldwide competition conducted by the Australian Commonwealth Government to select the best possible plan for the development of a national capital. Walter Griffin's plan has now become a reality, and Canberra, a modern garden city with striking new buildings and thousands of attractive homes in their garden settings, is a city of which all Australians may well be proud. From Red Hill, it's possible to see just why Canberra has become the garden city of Australia. Winding avenues of beautiful trees from the old world, combined with native acacias and eucalypts, provide one of the most superb autumn displays to be seen anywhere on the Australian continent. Parliament House, the home of Australia's national legislature. Canberra, where all nations meet, is the headquarters of the diplomats. The United States Embassy is a series of beautiful buildings in the Cape Cod style. The West German Embassy building. The Thai Embassy. The Malayan Embassy. The South African Embassy. Canberra has become a focal point of scientific research. Mount Stromlo Observatory, a department of the Australian National University, is well equipped to carry out research into astronomy. The clear atmosphere of the inland city permits pictures of the universe to be made with remarkable clarity. The Academy of Science is housed under a copper sheathed dome of most unusual design. The Australian National University, which is rapidly becoming one of Australia's most important seats of learning. There is much in Canberra to interest the visitor. The George V Memorial stands before Parliament House. Australia's memorial to the United States forces, simple but impressive. Australia's National War Memorial and War Museum. The memorial to Australians who have died in the defence of their country comprises the national collection of war relics and the building in which they are preserved. The storming of Mount St. Quentin, one of the critical episodes of the First World War. The Memorial Museum is a mecca for Duntroon Royal Military College cadets who are constant visitors. They are particularly interested in the dioramas, depicting historical moments in the wars they are studying as part of the college curriculum. The epic of Shaggy Ridge, one of the incidents of the war in New Guinea, is depicted in this reconstruction. Our wartime leaders have been immortalised on canvas by many famous Australian artists. A portrait of General Sir William Throsby Bridges, the first commandant of Australia's military college. This was done too in 1833. The same view from Mount Pleasant today. The original homestead buildings are now the officers' mess of Royal Military College Duntroon. Duntroon House in 1870 became the beautiful two-storey building we see today. The buildings and the site were acquired by the Commonwealth in 1910. For Australia, Duntroon has become the equivalent of Sandhurst and West Point. And in fact, the government's advisers at the time drew largely on the experience which had already been gained by the United States Military Academy. To this college come Australia's military leaders of the future, young men of fine type who embark on a most carefully planned course of study. Chemistry and physics are two of the important subjects in the curriculum. And Duntroon's laboratories are well equipped to train keen young minds in the practical application of science. The four-year course includes all aspects of mechanical, electrical and radio engineering. The college engineering laboratories are also extremely well equipped. The army sends selected students to continue their studies at Australian universities, where they qualify for degrees in their particular subjects. In addition to the study of the arts, economics, mathematics, science and engineering, the course for the Duntroon cadet embraces every aspect of military training. During his four years at Duntroon, the cadet received the benefits of a study plan that has resulted from 50 years of experience in the training of military leaders. 
Since 1911, Duntoon has produced 1,400 graduates, many of whom have distinguished themselves not only in the wars in which Australia has become embroiled, but also in the life of the Australian community. Although the course of study involving academic subjects is intensive, it is balanced by adequate physical training and out-of-doors activity. Every cadet must participate in all these physical activities. Physical fitness is a prime requirement for every cadet, and the assault course provides plenty of action and excitement for these healthy young men. The cadets are taught to handle the Army's latest rifle as part of a course of military instruction which includes the study of all the equipment used by the infantry and its supporting arm. Practical experience with a wide range of Army signalling equipment in the field and participation in field exercises provides the cadets with first-hand experience of battle tactics. The cadets' military training takes place within the setting of an infantry battalion operating with supporting arms and services. The advance, attack, defence and withdrawal phases of battle are studied in various types of terrain. These practical exercises are supplemented by the study of land air warfare and amphibious operations. And the possible shape of future warfare is also discussed to stimulate original thought. There's never a dull moment in the life of a Duntroon cadet. Sport is compulsory here because the aim of the army is to produce men who have balanced personalities, men who can take their place as leaders. For some cadets, amateur radio has become a most engrossing hobby. The Queen's colours and the College regimental colours are lowered on formal mess nights. This is a weekly experience which follows closely the traditions of all Australian Army messes. On these formal nights, the cadets have the opportunity to express their loyalty to their sovereign by toasting their gracious Queen. Coffee is taken in the cadet anterooms. Each cadet class has its own anteroom. Some of the musically minded cadets have formed a dance band and during the year the cadets organise informal dances in addition to the four formal balls held each year at the college. The dances have become an important part of Canberra's social life for the young visitors to the college. So are produced the men who, with graduates from the Army's Officer Cadet School, have been trained in military leadership. The traditions which have been established by Duntoon during the past 50 years are a constant inspiration to its graduates, to give always of their best, and to set the finest possible example for the men of the Australian military forces. Duntoon graduates leave the Royal Military College with the rank of Lieutenant. They join every branch of the Army, and with their background of training and their ability to think and plan clearly, become responsible for the maintenance of the highest possible military standards. The Army embraces a tremendous range of activities, and there is something to suit the particular talents of every young man who embarks on a military career. Leaving or equivalent standard is required for college entrance. But the Army is now helping submatriculation students by awarding scholarships to enable them to qualify for matriculation before entry. Six cadets are chosen each year for flying training because the Army is now operating its own aircraft. And many cadets complete university courses with the Army paying all expenses. On this day of Duntroon's Jubilee Celebration Parade, Australians have good reason to feel proud of their Royal Military College in Canberra.